um, the origins of polysellers in my work in restorative justice. And I go around the county knocking on people's doors uh, if they become the victims of crime. And I've started to get concerned over the last few years with the needs of just a small number of the younger victims of crime. Just to give you a few facts, um, young people are much more likely to be victims of crime, much less likely to report it than adults. They're more likely to be repeat victims of crime. They can be absolutely devastated. It undermines all of the positive things in their lives. Uh, many times they're not on a young person's door. They weren't feeling safe to leave home. Sometimes they insist on a parent taking them to school. They miss chunks of their, um, their education. Sometimes they move house or they, they move to school. And they could be virtual, virtual prisoners in their own home. So young people often have less coping mechanisms now, I wasn't worried about most of the young people because they seemed very resilient and if they had a good support network, they did very well and bounced back. A small number didn't, and I wasn't convinced that all the tenants talked about the gap. I wasn't convinced that anyone was picking up on their needs. So, um, we actually got um, a, a load of money from the Home Office to have a pilot project, a flagship project which got itself an award, um, where we delivered it to uh, initially, it's scary, uh, <laughs> we've put some air conditioning on it's so oh, hot, okay. and actually it's too noisy, so we'll shut it off. Uh, uh, initially, to, uh, to 60 young people, and then we managed to extend it to about 40, uh, where we trained up some people who were youth workers, police officers, victim support workers, teachers, um, deeply experienced people to go into the home of the young people who have been victims of crime, who weren't doing well, to really to help them in their recovery. And we used a well-known technique called protective behaviours, which helps them to learn more about what it feels like when they're not being safe, and to think about what they can do about it to recover in their, their confidence and to start to take little risks to get their lives back. And protective behaviours um, is, uh, you know, it, it, it can be very, very helpful. What we found is that if we uh, had one of these professionals going into someone's house for up to six sessions, could really help to turn them around. Polly mentioned the, the overlap between being a victim of crime and becoming an offender yourself. Uh, it's very common for young people who have been bullied or hurt through crime. Um, for another, there's a number of different reasons why they go on uh, to become more likely to be perpetrators in the future. So having had this money from the Home Office, it was a six-month um, pilot project, and we recruited all these project workers. <coughs> we kind of wrapped it all up. But actually, we felt that the need hadn't gone away, and that there was this gap that we all had talked about, and we weren't confident um, that there was anyone to do it. For example, victim support said that it wasn't young people aren't their kind of core business. So what we did then was decide that we would carry on trying to keep these um, project workers um, delivering a service to young victims of crime. So we went under a little local charity called Traps, which works with young people, and what we do is we pay the project workers, who I mentioned have all got day jobs as teachers, police officers, youth workers, uh, £250 as experts to go and be matched with a young person who's been a victim of a crime. So currently we have ten, about 10 project workers from those backgrounds, and we get referrals in from actually from many of the same agencies, from victim support, from the uh, mental health services, from schools, from the police, uh, and what we do is just literally match up the young person to this expert who goes in there and helps them to, to recover their life, really. So what I'm saying to you is that £250 of your money will go directly to help one young person who's had this experience of being a victim of crime. It's, it's quite a difficult age group to meet and to, to, to sort of offer a service to, because we're talking about many of them being adolescents, although we don't, you know, we've got a sort of expandable age range. Uh, what we found is that they, almost all of them, want to want the service um, to the full six sessions, uh, and they all come back with very positive feedback to say it helps enormously. Parents love it. They said, you know, we don't know what we would have done without without your help. So, um, yeah, as I say, it's a flagship project. What we're really hoping is that we will, uh, you know, sort of influence policy on a national basis. I think it's, um, I think these needs should be picked up. We're in discussions with victim support, um, and we're hoping that what we've found locally is a model, a flagship model that actually works, 
and can, you know, could be picked up. So I'm kind of hoping that in the long term, you know, this will, will this will um, be taken up by hand locally. But in the meantime, everything that we did, that we did tonight will be matched for one young person who's struggling through.